welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 149. This episode is with Casey Hamilton, who is a gem of a human being. You may know him best from his hilarious videos on TikTok as Mr. Hamilton. And I can tell you right now, he's even cooler than you already think he is. It was such a blast getting to know him. We talked about his first time really experiencing snow, which happens to be in Texas during these massive blizzards going on right now. Yeah, he's over there. Just crazy timing. Uh, We talk about road tripping, getting recognized in public, how he became a teacher at the school that he went to as a student, the first video of his that really took off his process for making videos, the importance of acknowledging creator burnout, the joy of tipping insane amounts, and so much more. Casey is fantastic, and you're going to love him. So, without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 149, with Casey Hamilton. Theme song time. I try to be as professional as I can be. What's that like? Uh, <laughs> I'll get back to you on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave up on that a while ago. It just, you know, it's it's yeah. a lot of work. It's I find. just, it's, it seems good in theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you. it's a good idea, but then you don't realize the amount of work it takes underneath. And you yeah. just get, you just get tired. You get tired. You know, how you doing today? doing very good how are you good you're alive i know you're in texas yes i am alive yes we have power we have water we're still on a boiled water notice we are right on the border of like i the next street over is not on a boiled water notice and oh man we are so our water is a little bit cloudy right now but we're just happy to have it at all sure sure man see this is going to be great to talk about when it's all over just be like, yes. Look what you did. Look what you oh, did. Oh, it's my first time seeing snow as an adult. I think I saw it when I was a kid, like six years old, but I don't remember. It's the first sure. time consciously seeing snow, and it was during this god awful yeah. Texas <laughs> blizzard. You got a lot of it. You went awesome. <laughs> right in the deep end. That's funny because I know you're from Florida. Oh yeah. And uh, I, I actually, I live in Naples. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, you know, way southwest Florida, and snow. It's cold, Casey. Yes. It's cold. (laughs) And I've not been in snow that also didn't have power to warm me up or water. That's you got you got the full experience. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. All right. How do you like it actually being cold? (laughs) I prefer it actually. I love it. I don't know why. I don't know why I was born in Florida. I always have cold. (laughs) Sure. Sure. It's So the snow, talk to me about this, because I've been in snow, I've been in real snow like once, and it was in New York, and it was like 11 inches, and it was not what I expected, because I'm originally from North Carolina, and you get like two, three inches, and it's like that slush, like dirty mud snow, it's not like light, you know? No, it was, um, this came down super light, it was powder. It was like absolute powder. Ooh. It was amazing. We got, um, I think we got like six, seven inches of it, Ooh. which is San Antonio has never seen it. Where we are, the area that we're at has mm. never seen that amount of snow in crazy. like 30 years. So it was, <laughs> it was up to, it was past my ankles and I was stepping in it and like my Crocs and my feet were freezing. My socks are all wet and sticking to my feet but i'm just like i have never been this cold before and i want to savor it i love it i went out barefoot in the snow i felt snow with my in between my toes and it was insane get it get it that's did you did you know going over that like it was going to be this cold like did you dress for it no yeah it wasn't (laughs) supposed we weren't supposed to get this it wasn't supposed to get the snow right it's not supposed to snow in san antonio like that it's only gotten like light dustings but it's never the streets were covered it was up to the curb what 
That's wild. That and in awesome. Florida, you can't really buy winter clothes. I've tried. No, <laughs> because you don't have winter in no. Florida. There is no winter in Florida. That's true. That's true. When it gets into the 60s, we're like, what is this? Mm. Yeah, I just found out because, you know, I've been following you for a while on TikTok. I love your stuff. Aww. And uh, you're you're in Plant City? Yes. Dude, that, yeah, that's like two, two and a half hours north of me. Like, I actually yeah. know where that is. It's ins- it's <laughs> that's why when you said Naples, I was like, oh, it's one of the cities that I recognize. I'm the worst with. Yeah, same geography. Same, um, same, same. Yeah, Plant City born and raised. Nah, how was that? Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> that good. <laughs> it's great. It's a nice I, I won't harp on Plant City. A lot of people from my town, especially the people that were born and raised, like to, you know, harp on it a little bit. But sure. it is a nice quaint little teeny tiny florida little pocket sized town everybody knows everybody it's really nice they're sprucing up the downtown area it's starting to become like a little trendy to go there, there you um, go. and it's a nice place to raise a kid it's a nice place to grow up it's a very tight knit community when when covid happened for instance um mm. we went home we didn't come back the seniors were supposed to graduate and so we did this big parade around the entire town for all of the high schools, not just mine. It was the three high schools in the area, all the seniors, they got a car each, the car dealerships helped and the city, uh, the County, actually Hillsborough County. was like, "Mm, we're not going to approve the parade. So (laughs) the city of plant city and the strawberry festival fund paid for the parade themselves. And all of the seniors got a big send off because they couldn't get it in school it's the first time we had seen them in months and that's a good way that, that's a good example of how the community you know comes together but i am a big personality clearly i sure. <laughs> have always been a lot so the walls of plant city um i've known just deep down i think i've without even consciously knowing it i think instinctively i've felt it in my bones that that town is not it for me i've got more to offer than just the walls of that town and i made my mark there and it's i the road trip that i went on july really showed me that there is a whole world out there yeah san antonio i think is going to be the place that i'm settling next really cool i like san antonio it's a good city i love it i've been all around how was that road trip it was life-changing what what were some cool places you saw i went to uh, I, I, I went uh, along the way. I saw some TikTokers that I had made friends with and that I was comfortable with seeing. Cool. Um, I didn't really stay at too many people's places. I got hotels. Um, sure. I only stayed with K Temps. Um, oh, cool. Because we were just super comfy by that point. Sure. Um, went to Lynchburg, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. Um, nice. Lynchburg is a tiny, tiny town and it it's another one of those places like why what what is to see there it it reminded me of plant city it reminded me oh, of my hometown okay, it was okay. like a nice little tight knit place i went to a yogurt shop i got recognized by the entire yogurt shop it was like a crowd of teenagers just hanging out because apparently nice. that's the yogurt yeti in lynchburg virginia is the one place to hang out so <laughs> that was great i the spot <laughs> i saw um I, I went to Denver, Colorado. I got to see Colorado for the oh, first time. Dude. I got to stay at this fancy old hotel. And since it was in the middle of COVID, everything was super cheap. So it was like a haunted <laughs> historic hotel. I, I passed, I blew through Arkansas. Um, I saw president's graves at the presidential uh, cemetery in Richmond. Uh, Richmond was one of my favorite stops. That was yeah really really special uh altus oklahoma i stopped there because i went to see dad life jason and that again reminded me of plant city it was a little bit of a more conservative town Mm -hmm. um but there were some kids there we did like a little meet and greet at an ice cream shop just to make sure we had enough distance sure and a gaggle of kids showed up and it was like (laughs) Uh, I it was like a a trans kid, a lesbian, two band kids. It was like a, a group awesome. of weird kids that it was like I, I I saw the group, I loved them, and then immediately I was like, "What are you doing in Altus, Oklahoma? <laughs> what are you doing here? This town is not sure for you." 
And it, it was a moment of like, I get it. I felt the same, like it ain't it for me. And we had like, we ended up crying at the end. Of, like we all ended up crying and like hugging. And that's cool. It's, it was really, really intimate. It was really special. Yeah, I, I love that. That's the kind of stuff that matters, in my opinion, yes. like real human connection. You know, it's like it, yes. it can get so rare these days that if you can find it, it's like this is going to stick with you for a very long time. That's really oh, that's cool. That's what I want to foster. That's what I want to foster anywhere I go. Hell yeah. Same, same. That's cool though. you got to like really experience like half the country to like drive I through it and really it. sit in it. That's neat. And I did it in like less than three weeks. That was when I was like, <laughs> oh, I like doing road trips. I'm good at it. I want to see as many things as I can. And I tend to, when I go on road trips, I don't really do many touristy things. Sure. I took a trip to Chicago just because nice. I stayed there for like two days and then drove back. Um, and they right. were like, did you see the bean? Oh my God. Did you go and see, <laughs> did you go to Portillo's? Or, mm? And sure. <laughs> I was like, no, but what I did do is I went out on the South side at like 11 o'clock at night and got lost on purpose. Get it. And they're like, they had those electric scooters and I was just scootering around and I made, I was like, I'm going to try to make it back to my hotel without maps. And I did. Yeah. It took me like two hours, <laughs> which is probably not the best idea that late at night in Chicago. Um, but it was a lot of fun. That's just what I tend to do. I like getting lost. Yeah, dude, I'm the same way. I, I've made so many bad decisions just to be able to talk about it afterwards. <laughs> yes. I love, I live for a good story. Yeah, same. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. You know, it's just yes. sit around and have a cool story to tell. Now you can be like, yeah, I got lost at night in the South side. Like, good for you. That's what yes. I'm talking about. That's a, such a better story than, well, went to my hotel and, you know, sat there and watched TV, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm about it. I'm all about stories and living life, I guess, is the way to put it. It's yeah. like, just get out there. There's so, I feel like we limit ourselves. You know, that if you just take that off and just drive, there's so many possibilities. You never know what's at the other mm. end. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Did you? So uh, I'm interested, actually, because I, I it's weird. I feel like I know you, but I don't. But I do. Do you find that that's a thing <laughs> that happens now because like people recognize you? Is that weird? I um, I don't go out in public with the uh, predisposition that I'm going to get recognized. I never know who is going to recognize me. So I always just assume that no one is smart. Um, so when it does happen, it's always like a surprise. It happened. We went to, we were going thrift shopping, me and my girlfriend yesterday. Hell yeah. Um, bought a boom box a couple days ago. And then Love I was it. like, Oh, I need cassettes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a two -parter. I, she, she enjoys vinyl. Like that's her thing. I've never cool. been too much of a vinyl thing. Cause it's, they're big and they like, yeah. uh, you went and you need a whole record player. And I know that it sounds good. And I just, but the cassettes <laughs> are so cool and compact and they're, and you walking around with a boom box on your shoulder just really appealed to me. So I bought yeah. it. And it. then we just went to a bunch of different Goodwills getting tapes and somebody heard my voice and Ooh, nice turned around and was like oh my god and I, <laughs> it, I it is you and i was like whoa that's that was weird that they recognized me by voice because i don't think i have that distinctive of a voice um mm -hmm. like my speaking voice sure um then we were at best buy we were at best buy buying the boom box and <laughs> the lady like we were at the counter and then another lady who was working there came up and she was like it it is you hi and the other two <laughs> workers there that were checking me out didn't know who i was and i was like <laughs> and she was like i don't know who mr hamilton is which did feel nice because i do get like that guy from tiktok sometimes sure sure you never know who's following you and who isn't i i sometimes come across people who i don't follow but i see them all the time so their face is recognizable it depends on the algorithm so you never know who follows and who doesn't i don't put it past right. people sure and it you never know who you went over, how long it's going to take. Um, but that that was nice to know that she was like a genuine actual She really fan. knew you. Yeah. Yeah, she really knew. And so anytime I see somebody in public, like I got to follow them back. And, you know, if they want a picture, some people are too scared to ask for pictures, which boggles my mind. <laughs> I... I don't know why people would be afraid to yeah. <laughs> approach me. I don't know. I don't consider myself like famous or anything special. Sure. Um, it, it's absolutely wild to me. So when I do recognize that there's like a nervous, like 
child you know i, I do get like teenagers that are like oh, you know, why can't I? right <laughs> are you mr hilton and i'm like yes would you, <laughs> would you like to get a picture is that something that you want there you go <laughs> it's it's been i had a moment <laughs> <laughs> I'm just remembering this now. I was on, um, I was scootering on, um, in North Carolina on the Raleigh, nice Raleigh University of North Carolina, some campus sure. that had scooters. It was the only place that had scooters. So I was scooting and I got recognized by a gaggle of like roll tide cap wearing like yeah. dude <laughs> bros, like you're that dude from TikTok. And I'm wearing my <laughs> pink Crocs and my crushed velvet shirt. And I'm like, yeah, hey guys, what's up? Did you guys want a picture? And they were like, uh, yeah, sure. And I was just like, because mm. <laughs> I was used, <laughs> I was used to nervous people asking or people who didn't know how to ask for a picture because it was, I, it was new. Sure. Me getting recognized in public. Um, it was very, very new to me at that time. So I was like, oh, did you maybe want a picture? I don't know. And they were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> and I, they did it like they t- gaggled like behind me and they did a group and they like were doing like dumb poses. And I, it was clear. And I walked away. And as they were walking away, I heard them all like laughing. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, that's a uh, moment where you right. <laughs> did not know your audience that's right they would do you want a picture because I'll, I'll give you one if you want <laughs> it was just so it was clear that they were like not that into it they were like oh it's a social media dude and then they were like yeah whatever i guarantee you they're right. gonna use that picture to make fun of me until i am dead right <laughs> <laughs> or they're gonna wait until there's just two of them be like yeah, it was pretty cool, right? We saw the guy who's all scooting around town. Pretty neat. <laughs> it, was like, it was like seven of them. Maybe one of them is like, I don't know. I think he's kind of funny, but can't admit it because they're all laughing at him. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I I also kind of love that you're a teacher. So you kind of have that skill set to be able to like talk to people and have yes. that sort of thing. Like who knew that that would come in handy to right. the scale, you know, teaching. Oh man. I ended up leaving teaching this year. Right. Actually it took a leave. That was a big, you know, I remember tight rope decision, but I, it, teaching has always been in my blood, I suppose. Um, sure. I was originally supposed to go to college for theater. That was my, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I got accepted I <laughs> into uh, the university of Florida's college of acting, but oh yeah. When I submitted the application for the university, I it was in like September. The theater audition was in January. I thought I was going to be a psych major, and it changed. Um, my SAT scores weren't quite up there, and I hadn't taken the ACT yet, which is a different test. I did very well on that, um, well enough to get me into schools that weren't like a deferred program. So sure. they were like, oh, you can go in like a summer spring session, but theater was fall uh spring right so i i ended up going to a different school and decided to go into education because i have a grandmother a grandfather mother i I have something like 10 15 teachers in the family at the university to elementary level so it was in the family business my mother went back to college to get her teaching degree and she was my senior year drama teacher in high school so it was it's always been there and i've always had a respect for teachers especially the teachers who can make a class interesting even if the class isn't important like if you can make it fun yeah absolutely that's awesome so then i was like well i guess i'll just go into education and just took that path really heavy transferred to a different school a year later um i went to the university of central florida in orlando cool a little bit of a party school got a little bit kind of away from my studies and i lost (laughs) my scholarship Um, Ah, that'll do it scholarship for a full year and ended up having to take out six thousand dollars in student loans uh yep sounds about right Um, paid those back so we're good but still just the consequences of like a bad semester haunted me for the rest of like until like past my first year of teaching like that august the the december of my first year of teaching is when i paid off my loans so that was a decision that haunted me all up until there um four years in college i drilled what i could and then graduated a week after i graduated i was substituting at my old high school oh sweet and i get a call on the school phone 
And it's my mom in her classroom. And she's like, hey, have you submitted your application? They want to hire you today. Dude. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I had submitted my county application. The principal called me in after school. And it was my principal when I was a, an eighth grader. So she already knew me. Oh, she, she had gotten promoted and moved up to the high school. And now she was the principal there. Sure. So she's looking at her former student and is like, hey, you want to work at Plant City High? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do. And then she went, great, you're hired. And Boom. That was it. Dude. And work there for three years and one week. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so was, because I know you taught TV production, yeah? Yes. Was that always the subject you wanted to teach? That was what I really wanted to teach. That was the cool, like golden goose. But I was originally hired to teach English too. My degree oh, nice. is in a um, secondary English education. But then they offered me TV um, two weeks before school started because the TV teacher left. He was my teacher my senior year oh. uh, of high school. So it was, he was holding on it. He was kind of sitting on it for me. And cool. it just sort of worked out because his son was great. He was done with fifth grade. They were moving to another town. It was perfect timing. Um, but either way, I would have been happy to teach English too. It was just perfect that it worked out that way. Right, right. What? How weird was it to go from like a student to now the teacher? Like you could go to the teacher's <laughs> lounge now. Like you're on the other side of the fence. It was weird. That part wasn't necessarily weird. Um, even with like, working with my old teachers, like them now being my oh, yeah. co-workers. That was a bit strange at first. Sure. Um, the weird part was I'm a 22 year old teacher and I have 18 year old seniors. Oh yeah. I didn't like, think about that. How, like, how do I at all project any semblance of I'm an adult that's been doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, luckily I had a beard and I was much more overweight than I am now. So I guess I looked older. So I, Sure. I guess I could command a presence. It was a bit of a rough start at first, though. I, will I can say. imagine. Um, I can imagine. Uh, I came in. The previous teacher was a football coach. It was very oh, yeah. chill. And I am a filmmaker. I mm. love making videos. I love throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Hell yeah. <laughs> so I came in, I guess, a little bit too hot. <laughs> and I was like, all right, we're going to have deadlines and th it's due projects, this, that you're working. And there were kids that have had the previous teacher for three years. They were expecting him for their fourth to finish out their senior year with. Then they get a new teacher that's making all these demands. Uh, and I'm coming at it from a perspective like I want to polish this program into like a filmmaking studio, which is going to take years. But we wanted to get there. We had to start somewhere. Right. Their perspective was, who the hell are you right. <laughs> coming into our place? Right. And so they absolutely ate me alive the first couple months. Um, Sounds about right. Nasty. They were just very short, very uncooperative. Yeesh. And there was one kid that I thought I was cool with. And I remember there was one moment where my phone rang. And the kid said, hey, Mr. Hamilton, your phone's ringing. I don't know why anyone would want to call you, but there it is. And all the kids laughed. And I was at that moment right there. I was like, I'm quitting. I'm yeah, quitting my job. I'm done. I'm not up for teaching. And I let it stew. I went home. I just let it evaporate. And then I came back the next day. I rounded up all the 12 little dickhead kids that yeah. were being rude <laughs> and I took them all to my back like I had a couple rooms I had like a classroom and then an editing bay and then another filming room so I took them all into the back oh, room cool. shut the door and I was like all right look I'm not your old teacher I'm not gonna be your old teacher I'm not gonna apologize for that all right however if I was in your position if I was in their shoes if I was a senior and a new teacher came in and started snapping his fingers and telling me what to do i would be furious and i would have done the same thing so i apologized to their face i was like i'm sorry for coming in too hot i should not have done that and then immediately it was almost immediately like one of the little cheerleader girls was like yeah we're sorry we just miss our old teacher and they all melted and then it was good from there and there are a couple of those kids that i still talk to to this day that's awesome um, periodically but you know, it was it was a rough start at first. It just goes to show that 
sometimes you just got to persevere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just keep pushing. You got yeah. this. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Cause that's like the age gap between that. That'd be like a senior telling freshmen what to do. Yeah, it absolutely was. That's bonkers. And then from there, I mean, that again, just is a testament to you being able to connect with people because you talk to them like people, as opposed to like the power dynamic of teacher to student. Hey, you're going to listen to me. It's like, oh, okay. You never get in a listen. power struggle as a teacher. That's the dumbest thing. Cause even if you win, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, oh man, I, I was a freshman in government class. There was a kid that we had a rule. Don't bring, you can't have drinks in class. Even if it was in a bottle, like a sealed, like screw cap bottle. You could not have a drink on your desk in class. And there was a kid that came in and he had a Coke on his desk in class. Why <laughs> have vending machines in the school if you're not gonna <laughs> let us drink them? So he brings the drink to class and my government teacher at the time was like, hey, you gotta throw that away. Kid says, I'll just put it on the floor. Teacher says, no, throw it away. Drink was almost full. Oh boy. So the kid was like, no. I'm not going to do that because it's a stupid rule and he's exercising his right to protest. That's right. That's um, right. <laughs> teacher gets more and more angry. They get in a little struggle and then he finally, it escalates to, all right, you go to the office. Now you oh. go. And the kid is like, all right, fine. Grabs his book. He leaves and leaves the Coke on the desk. <laughs> oh, no. The teacher goes to the Coke, grabs it, throws it in the trash and goes, hmm, and I still won. But did oh, no. you? Oh, no. but, but did you win? <laughs> That was a moment, like, even as a student, I was like, hmm, if I'm ever a teacher, let's try to avoid that. That's right. At the very least, drink the Coke. Come on, man. I mean, <laughs> and I still won. No, that's, you did not. That's, dude. that's crazy. I, I mean, the best thing that a teacher can do when they make a mistake is apologize, humanize. Yeah. These, Agreed. these are high schoolers. They're not idiots. They can sniff out disingenuousness like a truffle pig and they will eat you alive. <laughs> and they outnumber you by a lot. The, yeah. Yeah. That's wild. So your mom taught at the same school? Yes. Still so does. Ha oh, that's so cool. H had you been to the teacher's lounge before? No, actually. Never Ooh, had. So, so what was that like? It was underwhelming. <laughs> I thought it would be like a place with these suede chairs and be all swanky. And it was just a cafeteria. Right. <laughs> just some chairs like, where we could eat lunch. Oh. <laughs> you have that like big chest out walk. Like we're doing this. I got the keys. Oh, I'll tell you what they did have. They had a vending machine with regular sodas instead. Ooh. of diet. Oh, Cause all the kids <laughs> have to drink that nasty diet shit. Yeah. <laughs> not us. Uh, uh, not today. No. That's amazing. So, uh, so I, I, I know you're a teacher. I think that's really cool. Did you work at a movie theater? I did. Yes. Um, once a teacher, always a teacher. That is what I live and breathe by. But before I was teaching, uh, first year of college, um, at the university of South Florida, when I transferred, I had to get a job since I was living at home. And so I started working at the movie theater, which no joke is directly next to the high school. Oh, like it's Plant City High School and then the movie theater and there's a road in between. If you take the road, you go to McDonald's. That's like awesome. You, it's McDonald's movie theater high school. So you can the, the kids. It was a hangout spot. So I was like, well, I'll just get a job there. Ended up working there for seven and a half years. Um, wow. And was even working there during my first year of teaching because I had to pay off my loans. Right. With some of my students. Oh, because I had wow. gotten them. I had gotten them. Um, I, they had used me as a reference and I had put in a good word for them and they had got the job at the movie theater. So I was working with, at one point, four of my students at the same time. Oh, wow. So we would have first period, <laughs> we would have first period together. And then another one of them had me again for sixth period because he was a, a junior and he had um, like an administrative like office class. He was an office assistant. He applied to be my TA and I was like, hell yeah, you can be my TA. Get it. Um, so he was with me twice and then we all saw each other again, like after school or on the weekends <laughs> for work. Um, yeah, that was, that was, that was fun. I've got a lot of funky movie theater stories. Say, I also worked at a movie theater. So I, I love talking really? to people that also have, did you, did, did you have film or was it digital at this point? It was digital. Gotcha. Okay. When I did it, there was film and we actually had to thread wow. the projectors and stuff. And I think the statute of limitations have passed because I stole a yeah. ton of stuff 
Like, <laughs> 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 oh man, I wish I wish I had. They gave us posters for free though. Oh, there you go. Like, when they got rid of the posters and they were going to throw them away, they just gave them to us. I also used to take the popcorn at yes. the end of the night and I yes. would feed it to the ducks. Oh, there you go. There you go. I fed it to myself. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, here, we're just going to do this. <laughs> I have so, one of my prized possessions. I'll just incriminate myself. Why not? I feel like we're friends. Yeah. I have, <laughs> I have, a, I have a film reel that like one of the cans, it was an extra one that was left over when we switched to digital. So yeah. I have an actual reel that came like in the cans. And then I took, they had trailers that were like, you know, two and a half minute rolls oh of my God. film. And I, my brother and I spent all day one day taking all of these trailers and uh, just splicing them together and filled the reel. So I have a film reel that's just full of 16 millimeter film just of trailers. Of trailers. Oh, that's beautiful. Be yeah. You could take that. And there's a, oh God, what was it? It was a DVD that I saw. It was literally just like an hour of old movie trailers. You could sell that. Right, right. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Did so we <laughs> so with the movie theater. What made me think of it was uh, I remember you made a video a while ago with the piece of mojado, <laughs> 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 and I think I think that was one of the first videos I ever saw of yours that I was like, this is kindred spirit. We have the exact same. There's there's another one. I'll just throw out the <laughs> the, the five gum. One that you did. It's like how oh, it shoes. <laughs> that was a genuinely a, a mess up. <laughs> that just how it chews to gum five feels. I, <laughs> dude, I've sent that to my family. <laughs> it's just so I'm I'm wondering. Do, so you're known for TikTok, right? And that's how I know you. Had sure. you been on Vine or anything before TikTok? I was as a lurker. I posted some vines, but they never really did fairly well. Sure, sure. Um. I I don't fairly remember. I remember I was in my old classroom as a student when I downloaded it. I remember where I was when I downloaded it. And then used it primarily when I was in college that first year, just doing nothing but just watching dumb vines. Sure, sure. And then Fine. you, with TikTok, was it, because uh, I've talked to a few other TikTokers as well, and was it quarantine that like yes. really spurred you? Yeah. Yes, it was quarantine. I, I started, I, I downloaded TikTok because I was going to use it as a tool for the classroom. I oh, was going to have my level one TV students use the TikTok app to make their um, video projects because they were using TikTok anyway in class. So why not? <laughs> um, smart, smart. It was an if you can't beat them, join them situation. And it was a, really, it could have been a perfect marriage. But then March hits, quarantine happens. I was already lurking by that point. So then I was like, well, why not just start posting videos? All right, who cares? Um, I posted videos here and there, not expecting to get any attention from it. Right. At all. I, I thought I was going to teach at that school for 40 years and retire and die in Plant City. I genuinely thought that. Yeah. Um, and then... I don't, I think it was April 1st, April 1st. I posted a video where I dressed up as Patrick star and I said, I'm a savage, classy, bougie Patrick. Yep. And then I danced yep. in front of the camera and I saw myself and I laughed. I, I, I saw how ridiculous I looked. I started laughing and that hit like 500,000 views. And I was like, okay, I'm the Patrick guy. That's going to be me. <laughs> I had a go. slow, like steady increase to 30,000 followers. And then dude, May 14th, I posted a video and I had like, six videos hit a million in the span of like eight days, like back to back. It was like that one, the five gum, the silly goose, me popping my mouth. It was like a bunch of different ones. Yeah. The bucket for the mop. It was all yep. at the same time. Um, and then it just hasn't stopped. Sure. That's so cool. I, I always wonder with people, cause it, it's a different relationship to be someone who watches a ton of stuff versus a creator. You know what right. I mean? Cause it's work. It's a lot of work, like, and just mental power to be like, mm -hmm. I'm going to make something. So it's really cool that you made the, you made the jump across. Oh yeah. I was into it. And I just realized everything that you've said, I'm like, right. Yep. I remember this. I remember this. I oh. might've been following you since the beginning. So you probably were. Hey, oh. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so fun. So uh, how long were you on it before you started making stuff? I believe I downloaded it in September. Dude. 2019. So not long. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then your Lizzo video, pretty great. 
good lord i i remember <laughs> i got a hundred thousand followers that day what did your phone that, do uh i turned off my notification yeah. <laughs> um smart smart i was in i was getting i was getting tattoos done i love tattoos they hurt so yep. bad when i get them i don't know why i put myself through them but i, I was same same i was getting uh four tattoos done in a day um, in a day yeah dude they were for you sort of smaller pieces it's uh well not well not really <laughs> I, yeah it was stupid it was stupid to do that um i had a stick and poke tattoo that i did on my right oh. leg someone else did it for me they did like four sticks and i was like ah i'm tapping out it was way <laughs> way too painful it was too slow yeah so i just had like a black dot on my knee that was getting real blown out and then <laughs> as i'm getting these other tattoos done i find out about the lizzo duet and i was like oh shit here we go <laughs> well look up her signature i told my artist i was like look up her signature uh mina geist her name her name is mina geist like mina poltergeist at dixie oh, station tattoo awesome. in plant city florida best place ever Love um, it. i was like look up her signature we found a signature of hers that had an exclamation point and so I was like, well, perfect. Let's start a cover up <laughs> of my little stick and poke. So I have a cover up with Lizzo's signature on my thigh. Get it. Which is the most unnecessary cover up because it's the little <laughs> dot of the exclamation point that's covering up the original dot. And then it, it hurt. The rest of her signature is like really big on my thigh. It hurt. <laughs> it was, that's on my right thigh. And then I have the, uh, the username of a random TikTok user on my left. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. I love your birds aren't real. Yes, that was one of the I was that was one of the ones I was getting that day. Dude, she's very good. Your artist, yes. like the the shrimp one you have as well. Just the, co insanely the colors. Cool. I was Beautiful. getting the eat the rich, the yeah. other leg tattoo, the shrimp and the birds aren't real that day. Dude, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, she Oh, Mina will, she will put you in an arm bar. She will hamburger that stuff into you. Yeah. <laughs> but it comes out looking last. pristine. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I got a tattoo once in a dude's house in Antigua. And uh, don't do that. It doesn't no. look, it doesn't look as good. And it was like $20 and it looks like it, you know, but, but the story, go, Casey, the story. the story, the story is where it's at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so wild. I, I love that you remember it as well. Because it's like of all the places you could have been to get like a life changing moment, it had to have been when you were getting not one, two or three, but four tattoos at once. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so awesome. I, I wonder though, like, because everyone has a different process for making things. So what is like your average process for how you make your videos? Is it spur it of the moment? Has, it has evolved um, because I've recently... Um, and this is actually very, very new. It, it was initially just spur of the moment, whatever, whatever, just post, 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 post. Sure. Your brain. And I would post 10 to 15 videos like a day. Ooh. Um, and then it, like comment responses, just whatever, whatever. Yeah. Then around November, I just burnt out. I hit a wall and I'm still feeling it. I'm still in it right now. I, I am at the point now where I'm like, I have no good ideas. I'm scraping the bottom, bottom of the barrel. I have no idea what to do. Sure. And I and I feel bad for it as well. I'm I feel bad for not being able to keep up, but at the same time I have to recognize that it's just burnout. So it's a right. definite new beast that I'm tackling right now and it's I don't know if people talk about it enough. Yeah, I think it's super important cuz like that's the other thing is like from the consumer side, right? You're so used to getting that thing and you're like, oh, cool. You provide mm -hmm. this thing for me. Awesome. But you forget that the person making them is a person. Yeah. You know, it's a, I, I agree. I don't think people are talking about that enough because that's a lot of work. It that's is. Work. And then with the creator fund, once you put a monetary attachment onto it, once you put numbers onto it, once you start worrying about that, of course. I mean, if anything becomes a job, it's going to become a little bit more stressful, but totally. You know, I was keeping up with things for so long and, you know, I hit a wall. I, I have a tendency to feel guilty for not yeah. being able to keep up for, 
you know, not being able to, I, I get to a point where I can't even open TikTok. I can't even look at comments because it just overwhelms me that bad. It fills me with such a sense of anxiety. I'm like, I can't even keep up with it. There's TikTok and Instagram and this and that and the emails and I have the merch and this business account and two managers and this and that. And they, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do that. And I, I want to start YouTube and I want to vlog and I want to do a podcast. And I want to do this film and I, I don't have the energy to do it, but I want to do it. I have the motivation, but no energy and I feel guilty, but I have to keep up with the people and it's just all swimming in my head at the same time. Yeah. So that I, I wonder how many other creators are going through the exact same thing. And I wonder how many casual viewers understand like just what an absolute minefield creators brains can be. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why it's important to like, that's why I like having people on my show that are creators and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Cause I like to magnify that. Cause I think that's, I think that's so important. And like a dream job is still a job. That's something yes. a lot of people don't talk about. And also like, with the amount of followers you have and stuff like that, there's, I can't even imagine the amount of pressure because it's a fun thing that you just start doing. And you're like, oh, I'm going to do this thing because I like it. And I'm going to make people laugh and stuff. But then you're right. When money gets involved, money a lot of time can strangle art. And you're like, oh, right. Now there's, there's pressure. I like have to get to work. And yes. it's a different relationship to the whole thing. It's wild. It's, it's wild. It's, um, it's definitely something that I'm working toward navigating if i didn't have my girlfriend i would be dead i would be done sure um we are actually uh, after this we're going to go to best buy and look at a little point and shoot camera to get we're going to try hell yeah at vlogging because i know how to edit i can do that myself i taught yeah. kids how to edit it's just when it comes to youtube i also have the problem there are so many things that i could do because i i can yeah. I like acting. I like singing. I like dancing. I can do comedy, like funny stories, story times, mukbangs, whatever. There's so many things you could do reaction videos. Yeah. And I have at least the amateur capability to edit. So I'm like, Hmm, I have all of these doors to open. I'm just going to sit right where I am and open. Yeah. <laughs> sure. it's, it's very, it, you can get overwhelmed by just the amount of things that you want to do. And totally. I, I asked the people on Instagram, like, what do you want to see? And they were, the majority of it was like, do a vlog. And I was like, well, I don't, know how to vlog how do you do that <laughs> luckily my girlfriend binged vlogs her whole like youth and shut like the shade tards and all that she was a vlog sure. kid when family vlogs were the thing so she has the knowledge on that so we're gonna try our hand at that and that actually is the first time in a while i i would say in about a couple months that i have been excited about an idea hell yeah and That's awesome. it's it, it sounds like if I was where I was mentally a year ago, I would be like, oh, that sucks. It took you that long to freaking have a positive idea. But now I'm like, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful thing. I agree. That I was so creatively drained for so long. And even if we just were talking about the idea yesterday, I'm excited about something creative. Yeah. That's a step in the right direction. Absolutely. You kind of, you have to... <laughs> almost teach yourself to give yourself a break. Yeah. 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 And I don't know how to do that yet. Yeah. Me neither. It's, it's the plight of the creatives. I think, mm -hmm. you know, you have that whole, and then, yeah, you can totally be paralyzed by possibility. Yes. It's like, it's so much that, that was kind of the beauty I found of vine is like the restrictions is what bred the creativity. Seven mm -hmm. seconds. what you got? Like, oh, right. Okay. So funnel it in and TikTok's kind of the same way. You got like a minute. But I think that's why I didn't necessarily do well on Vine because I'm not I'm not really a sketch writer. Right, right. Um, a lot of people I've I've had like I had a conversation with my manager before. Like, what do you want your where, where do you see yourself? Like, bleh, sure, yeah. Where, <laughs> do you want your creativeness to go? And I <laughs> I consider myself like if I could describe myself, if I could package myself. Yeah, I am. A mixture of Robin Williams and Chris Farley in terms of Robin Williams' ability to just do things. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm as good as them, not at all. Right. Um, but Robin Williams could sing, act, improv, stand up. He could do a lot. I yep. can do a lot of voices. I can sing, yeah. act. I, I have a lot of tools on my tool belt. And Chris Farley was a very, very big personality, a very manic energy. However by other people's admissions, he was not the best sketch writer. He didn't right. come up with the best ideas for sketches, but 
if you needed him for anything, he was gung ho to do it. Like, yeah, no matter what he was jumping in. What do you need? What do you got? I'll do it. It didn't matter if it was embarrassing. It didn't matter if it was stupid. He would do it. And I want to take that tool belt ability with that, you know, want to just perform and combine the two for the social media age, fill that void that the two of them left for this updated time. Hell yeah. I can see that. It's it's funny, right? When you said it, it was like, it made total sense in my head because I can already see you have that. And yeah, Chris Farley is such a great example because he also like, I know he had like depth to him. You know what I mean? Like Robin is one of the most incredible people to ever do it. But Chris was one of those things like, he's so quick with the joke and will throw himself off the back of a chair, but you can mm-hmm. tell there's so much going on. And I, I I'll, I'll give it to you. I feel the same way when I watch your stuff. Oh it's God. Really? Thank like you. genuinely. And I'm not just saying that, like you can tell that the things that you're doing are coming from such a place of like honesty for lack of a better term, you know? And I think that's why you've done so well and why I enjoy watching the stuff you do. Cause we definitely have the exact same sense of humor. So that helps a lot too, Wow. but it's like, I think it's cool. I, I really appreciate creators because it's like you didn't, I, I think the consumer takes for granted a lot of that because you didn't have to do any of this stuff, you know? And with quarantine specifically, like you made a lot of people laugh. So it definitely me. So like when I was going through a rough time, I'm like, oh, here's another one. That is hilarious. So for a second, I wasn't thinking about anything else because your stuff was so good. So thank you for that. I appreciate you. See, I, I have trouble putting it in those terms myself. It's That's why I'm here. It feels really good to hear that, genuinely. It's true. It's I, I remember reading a book a long time ago, uh, The Haga Kore, and they talked about like the importance of friends. And the whole thing was like, everyone's life, you're standing in the center of a hurricane, right? So you have winds all around you all the time. So you don't see anything outside of the wind, but your friends are outside of your storm so they can see things you can't. And that's like the that's why it helps to have an outside perspective and people that like will be honest. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you're like, there's a thing over there. You're like, I don't think so. Right. It's bonkers. So like you, do you know how many videos you've made like so far? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, um, I, I think it's got to be somewhere like around 2,500 maybe. Oh, oh, it's a lot of work, Casey. <laughs> it's a big number. It's I mean, it, it just sort of happened. I don't know. Yeah, (laughs) that's the key. You just put your head down and work. And then when you put your head up, you're like, oh, oh, right. But then it's no surprise that like find out the exact number. Let me see if I can't look it up. That's so wild. But that's the grind. You know what I mean? It's like you you are where you are now because you've put in so much heart and so much work. You know, that's another important part of the equation (laughs) that people don't talk about. (laughs) When you think back, is there a video that took the longest to make? Um, hmm. there were a couple, like I did some little music videos, like mini music videos with the fisheye lens that I was editing in premiere. Um, yeah. I've done a few TikToks that I edited in Adobe premiere. Um, nice. Did an Outback brand deal for Valentine's day that took a little bit, but sure. Nothing that's taken too, too long. I, 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 I try to just shoot it off at the hip most times right on right on is there one that like took a ton of tries like, um ah, not quite not quite maybe this one hmm. there are if it ever takes like too many tries then i just <laughs> i i don't i don't right. do it there is one i was trying to do that thing where they i don't know how people do it but they like move their knees and hips and they like throw their ass in a oh, certain yeah. way either it's like and they down chicken spin and i don't know how to do that and i've tried so many times <laughs> and i don't know how to do it there have been times where I've like tried to do a dance and I just can't get it right or it doesn't look right to me. And then I just throw the whole video away. Right, right. Like, this ain't it. <laughs> <We're> the- <laughs> I don't even care. I didn't even want to do it anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do something else. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> so were there multiple versions of the suit and tie dance that you do? No, that's the, the one. That's it. That's the magic. I did that stupid dance. I wasn't even... <laughs> thinking and i did it to the song because i don't know why 
I don't know what it was that it was the song that sounded good at the moment. I heard, I think it was a, a trending audio that was going around at one point. And then I was just like, oh, I'll just do a dumb dance to it. And I posted it before I went to bed and I posted it and then immediately went to sleep. Then the next day I woke up and it was, it had like 1.4 million views. And I was like, oh, that, oh, whoa, that's weird. <laughs> and then I was going on the road trip the next day and I was like, well, why don't I just do that in like random different places? That'd be cool. Yeah. And so I did. And then that was it. It was just repeating it enough until it, you know, permeated. And I did get comments that was like, this is all that he does now. And this is the only <laughs> thing that I see from him. Like he used to do other stuff and now all he does is the dance. When like that might be all that you're seeing on the algorithm. Sure. <laughs> on your for you page, <laughs> which is not my fault. But then I took one of those comments and I responded to it and I just did the dance again. Yeah. It's, it's whatever. You rang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It that I mean, that's a great example of people just being like, "Oh, this is it." It's like, no, just just click the profile. There's like eight of these yeah, today that are different. Like little little lead work, guys. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you find now that you have like such a following now? Is there a common misconception that people have about like the TikTok experience from this point? Hmm. That you're just swimming in money. That yeah. you're just making a bunch of making money. Sure. Um, I'm definitely making a little bit more than when I was teaching. However, it is not stable at all. The creator fund money, like my February money is not looking very good, but I've had other months <laughs> that do well. And, you know, you get a brand deal here and there that can pad good your for you. Account, but it's, and I, I also, I kind of shoot myself in the foot because I, I don't, I think that I should, I was like, I should only pay my bills with my creator fund money. Like once I left my job, I was like, use the creator fund to pay your bills. And then all other money you get like from brand deals, put in your savings, mm -hmm. anything. And then I was always like anything you get from Venmo or cash app, you give to other people. Cool. Um, so I've gotten, I I've gotten those. a lot through Venmo and cash app that I have not kept. Uh, and if I did keep, I, it would be a good chunk, but whatever. It's just the look on someone's face <laughs> when you like tip them $50. And I've done the, like the tipping videos that are on there are not the only times that I've done that because I, right. I genuinely like doing that. There have been times where um, the whole reason I'm even verified was because I tipped somebody at Outback it was after I tipped a waiter like a thousand bucks. I didn't expect to get that much and we had to cut it off then. And yeah, I, I was in the mood to do it again. So I was like, I'm going to do 250 at a, at a Outback in my town at the Plant City Outback. And I was doing it out of my pocket. It was just, I was just doing it just because I was in the mood for Outback and I wanted to feel good. And then the server happened to be my neighbor. So then I decided oh. to make a video and then Outback got a hold of me and helped me get verified and now I'm working with them making videos for him. So that's nuts. Um, but you know, like tip $50 here and there, there was one time where I was, I took somebody out to lunch and we tipped a hundred dollars each. We like pulled together and did 200. It's, it feels so good. Yeah. It feels amazing. And to a degree, it's a bit selfish because you're giving them like a big tip to, sort of be like look at what i am doing right yeah. <laughs> but it, it's if that's selfish it's the most wholesome kind of selfishness i it's yeah i agree it's great to just see that unbridled look of like wait what me why why and that's mostly what they do when they i, I try to do it like if i'm doing it by i used to do it by like cards leaving a tip on a card and then i would just dip out i would leave sure <laughs> but then people say people told me that um it's bliss. restaurants take a percentage of that mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want to give any percent. It's all going to the person. So yeah. <laughs> then I started doing a thing where, especially if it's big amounts of money. Um, and when it came from, you know, the public, I wanted to make sure that I made videos to show them where it was going, that it right. wasn't going with me. So I, now what I do is I pull out cash and I give it to him. I go, this is a gift. This is not a tip. I'm an asshole. I'm not tipping you today. Oh, didn't that suck? I'm, <laughs> literally putting a zero 
sure on the tip thing sorry i didn't tip you but here's your gift you don't have to tell your manager about a gift you don't you don't have to tell your manager about gifts you yeah, don't you only true. have to tell them about tips so you put that gift in your pocket hell yeah and the if they ever if it's ever in a position where they notice they're like what i don't what well the confusion yeah <laughs> i live confusion is one of my favorite emotions and right. whether it's wholesome confusion like that or malicious confusion <laughs> um I remember being me and my best friend, Brian, Hi. we were at a smoke shop buying, I, I believe I was buying a pack of cigarettes when I used to smoke. Don't smoke. Don't yeah. ever. Um, <laughs> and there was a woman there. Uh, I guess she had just gotten off of work. She was working construction or something. She had like a reflective vest on and she was buying beer at a smoke shop. I don't know why. Nice. Um, there was music playing and she was complaining about the music and she was like, I don't have any better playlists that you can play. Oh boy. <laughs> and the guy behind the counter was like, I mean, I have different playlists, but I'm not changing this one. Yeah. <laughs> and my best friend turns to this woman and goes, yeah, I don't like R Kelly either. It was a reggae playlist, by the way. <laughs> a reggae playlist was playing in this smoke shop because of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> and he turns and goes, yeah, I don't like R. Kelly either. <laughs> Knowing full well what he was saying. <laughs> I don't like R. Kelly either. And she turns to him and goes, that is not R. Kelly. That's not R. Kelly. That is not R. Kelly. <laughs> no. That is not R. Kelly. She was... <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> <Man. laughs> and then he opens up a conversation. He's like, well, do you like country music? And she's like, no, I don't like country He's like, well, do you like R and B? She's like, mm -mm, I don't like R and B. And then he was like, well, what kind of music do you like? And she was like, mm, well, I like gospel. And he went, okay, and turned around and didn't talk to her again. <laughs> just, we live for those little confusing moments. Like we'll mispronounce words in public, like just oh, yeah. in conversation. Like, oh, like um, I like the little bowl of mixed fruit that you have. You got some some blueberries and pineapple. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just we'll we'll throw it out there and leave it because we love the look. We don't want to like gaslight people or deliberately confuse people. But what we want to do is see that look in your, you know, when you confuse somebody, but they don't want to vocally say it because they want to be polite. Yeah. <laughs> but they have like a little squint of their eyes, like yeah, as, the if blank. To, as if to say like, <laughs> mm. it's just like a little movement, like, mm, I don't know about that. Like, yeah. Oh. So it's that's, squinting I, like I head turn. Eat, like, I mm. eat. yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know about that one, buddy, mm, but I'll, I'll, I guess we're just going to leave that out there. I live for that. I eat it for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that'll sustain you for a while. <laughs> Take two quesadillas, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. I love it. And <laughs> I can picture it, too. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, man. Did you When you're like... It's just, I love talking to people who have a totally different experience in life than I do as well. Cause I just like learning and been like, what's inside the globe look like, you know? Cool. And like, so was there like, is there, is there a big thing that you've learned in the last year that like, oh, this is a lesson I'm going to take from this part. Hmm. Don't be so mean to yourself. I mean, I, Ooh. I am dude. I, this 2020 has been the year of mental health awakening for me. Yeah. And I am notorious for being like, not just hard on myself, but downright nasty and mean to myself. Like yeah. if I'm ever anxious or having an anxiety attack in front of somebody, like even if I'm exhibiting like mild symptoms of anxiety, like I just, I don't know. I don't really want to be in this area right now, or maybe I'm just, I'll just go for a walk. I will. I will guilt trip myself about it and feel bad for having the anxiety at all. Yeah. I will feel bad for not being able to keep up with my expectations of myself. I have always beaten myself up over not being able to meet my own expectations. And this year has shown me that I can exceed my own expectations. I mean, this, yeah. I never thought, and I hate to say the phrase, like, I always thought I was going to be just a teacher because, you know, just a teacher is not at all a bad thing to say. Like, teachers no. are heroes, heroes are yeah. absolute heroes and deserve to be treated better. Agreed. Um, but I knew deep down in my core that I was not supposed to be teaching in Plant City, Florida for the rest of my life. I yeah. was not supposed to retire a teacher. I wanted to entertain. I wanted to be an actor, a singer. I just wanted to be an entertainer. 
and I knew that I had to do it. So this has just showed me that, you know, I don't have to put myself on hold and not to be so hard on myself because I was just doing the stuff for fun, not having any expectation of myself. And I, I, and that's the thing. I didn't have any expectations for TikTok. I didn't have any expectations of getting famous. I didn't have any expectations of people would like me. I didn't have any expectations that anybody would want to keep seeing what I was doing. And yet it happened anyway. Yeah. So maybe I don't have to hold myself yeah. to such a hard standard, such a high standard. Yeah. Dude, I'll get candid with you. That I needed to hear that. That that's a, such a hard lesson to learn. And like, yeah, I, I I'm with you. I have a vicious inner monologue, and that's yeah. that's really that's cool, man. That's I'm I'm really happy for you. And also, like, I love when good things happen to good people. And dude, you're one of the best people I've got to talk to, genuinely. Oh. And so you, you keep doing what you're doing because it makes me feel good. That's my selfishness. I'm, <laughs> I, want, <laughs> I want you to be the best you can possibly be. So I can be like, yeah, yeah. hope <laughs> it exists. <laughs> so on, on that with no expectation, then like, do you have any advice for like people who want to be, I mean, it's weird that like a TikToker is, it's a title now. It's a thing that yeah. people can aspire to be. Do you have any advice for people like that? Uh, my advice. Mm, well, again, try not to have any expectation for anything to happen. That's the Smart. best. Just treating it, treating it like a work. hobby is the best thing to do. Yeah. Um, but also on the logistical side of things, you have to remember, like, if you ever get into like, what do I do? What do I post? I'm not good enough. Nobody's going to want to see me. You don't know that. Just do it. <laughs> Just post. Just post. Just post. Everything is content. Do you know? how many people there are on the earth over 7 billion do you know how many quadrillions and quint how many combinations of personalities and likes and dislikes there are i don't particularly listen to podcasts on my own well wow. because i i know i don't you i don't wound like me, Casey. because i like it's i i always have to move i can't just sit and listen to a podcast i gotta be doing that and playing a game and this and that sure. I, if i'm listening to podcasts i'm in the car and i'm go. road tripping but i'm not always doing that so i don't always get to listen to podcasts right um, i forgive you and the podcasts that i enjoy true crime yeah i love true crime i there i just prefer it and there is one i listened to the last podcast on the left oh sweet Good one. And my girlfriend is like, well, there are some other true crime podcasts out there. And I'm like, mm, yes, but <laughs> I listened to the last podcast on the left. That's and right. it's just like a pref. Some people just have their preferences. <laughs> that is my particular branch of podcast content that I enjoy. Absolutely. I've tried to branch out. I don't, mm, oh, yeah. well, <laughs> there are, there's a phrase like, it doesn't matter if you're the sweetest, juiciest, tastiest peach in the world. Yes. There's always going to be somewhere out there that doesn't like peaches. But I will 100%. compound that with by saying there's always going to be somewhere out there that doesn't like peaches. But there are going to be people out there that don't like peaches and don't know why. Ooh. There are going to be people that don't know why. I just don't like them. I don't know. Right. <laughs> so why do you watch them? Why do you like their content? I don't know. I just do. That yeah. could be you. That could be you. So post. Everything is content to someone. What may not be content to somebody is going to be content to somebody else. So just post everything. Everybody's going to watch it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, don't post everything. You want to have some <laughs> yeah. sort of a filter. But don't be afraid to you just throw stuff out there. You never know what's going to stick. I never thought any of my stuff was going to stick. I never thought that my voices were going to stick or my manic energy. But here we are. I don't know here exactly what has stuck. but You stuck. That's what. I, yeah. That's my dude, man. I love it. I love it. And that's solid. That's solid advice that taper the expectations, but also just it, it's that old adage. Just do it. It's the dumb yeah. answer that nobody likes to hear because it's so simplified, but it really does come down to that. Yeah, Just, just put it. yourself out there and don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Keep going. I love it. I love it. Dude, we've been talking for over an hour already. Oh, we did it. We did it. it. This was so fun. This was like, awesome. I, I'm so glad that you came on and this was such a great time. Like, Wow, because yes. you never know. You know, like we didn't know each other before this. And this was I a love blast. It. Same, same. The, the connection. That's what it's about. Yes. But dude, before I let you go, 
I got to ask, uh, where can people find you online? Plug your stuff. Give me something good. Well, you can find me at TikTok, of course, at Mr. Hamilton. That's M-R-H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N. You can also find me on Instagram at C-H Steakhouse. That is the Casey yeah. Hamilton Steakhouse for all of you that like a delicious meal. I am also Ooh. thinking about starting a podcast at some point. I don't yes. know. That'll be for the near future, but we're definitely uh, starting to focus on the YouTube channel. You can just find me at Mr. Hamilton on YouTube. We're going to start vlogging. We're really going to start to actually tackle that you know, seriously, instead of just, you know, saying, oh, we should. Sure. I have a MySpace page. I don't know the link for that. So <laughs> that was a joke. Um, yeah, that's fairly, that's pretty much it. I love it. I love it. And... My Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.